Hello, and welcome back to Games I Think You Should Play. As you can see in the title, I did a big brain and abbreviated it into my helpful little acronym, GTYP, or Game Thank You Play. Today, we're going to be talking about Star Sector, and forewarning, I fucking love this game. Like, top 10 games, I'll play it all day if left unchecked. But why do I love this game? Because it's fun, dumbass. But that's not the point, I need to provide, like, evidence and stuff. So I'm going to tell you why I love it, and why I think you should pick it up. But how could you know you want to play it if you don't know what the hell the game even is? Well, according to a Mr. G on a video that I have not watched but only seen the title for, it's Mountain Blade in Space. If you've played and enjoyed Mountain Blade, that should get you a little hype. But if you haven't, well, those words are meaningless. So let's start fresh. What is Star Sector? Well, if we just want to talk tags, it's a 2D top-down sci-fi game. But that doesn't paint a good picture. What I think does is my experience with it. And my experience with Star Sector has been a game that finally lets me do what I want nearly all the time. What I mean by this is when I first started playing the game, it was very open. I got to follow my own path in that regard. I wanted to be a bounty hunter, but like a bounty hunter in space. It was like my number one thing I've always wanted to do, like any game ever. Specifically like Scythe, I feel like we just gotta talk about that, like any game ever. You know, I didn't play fucking Skyrim, wanna be a space bounty hunter, that would be dumb. Uh, back to back to the topic at hand. Um. <laughs> the Western's lawlessness and chaotic nature is what's so appealing about that genre. So applying those rules to sci-fi has always been a dream. But back to what I was really saying, I could become a bounty hunter, and it was very satisfying. It didn't feel like a, well there's an aspect of the game, it really felt like a choice I made. It's something that I got to really go down and experience thoroughly. It's truly one of the very few games that immersed me, that made me feel like Spider-Man, I, I mean a space captain. And to this day, I can still load up the game and continue my journey, or start a new one and pursue new ambitions, and change the galaxy around me. I think that's what makes me enjoy games in general a lot, but that's for another time. But specifically, Star Sector is that I absolutely adore that I can shape the world around me. That my actions have effects and consequences. Like, for example, if I'm playing another game I enjoy, such as The Witcher 3, well, the game is story-based and has a lot of decisions that will affect the world around me. Killing random monsters doesn't bring any satisfaction beyond what I'm actually being rewarded for in killing it. If it's not a part of a quest, I could ignore it completely and know that literally nothing will happen. However, in Star Sector, for better or worse, there aren't actual characters. Instead, you're dealing with factions, ones that you can grow to love and hate. But the better part of that is that most things are looked at on a greater scale. While you may not have one person to thank you, you've saved millions of lives for whatever faction by ending those raiders. That's just my experience though, playing multiple run-throughs of the game. And you could go down a much different path than me and have your own unique experience to tell. Now what makes the world around you feel so alive is how complex it is. It's nowhere near something like Dwarf Fortress. But seeing the world shape around you and all the larger and tinier implications coming together to form your story makes it feel unabashedly rewarding. Now, I don't have a good segue, so let's just do a jump to my favorite complex part of the game. Your ships and combat. You're able to fully customize any ship you get with a hell of a lot of guns, armaments, and other modifications. And you're able to take direct control of your ship, plus take tactical control over your whole fleet. I just want to talk about the absolute funnest part of this game, and that's just the hype-ass space combat. So if you didn't catch it earlier, you get to have a whole fleet of ships that you acquire during your campaign in a variety of ways. You deck them full of your favorite guns and mods so each ship can serve its unique purpose, and as fun as it is to watch all of your hard work come together as your ships absolutely ream every other ship they come into contact with, your own too if you're not too careful, it's so much more fun to do all the reaming yourself. Yeah, maybe I should stop saying Reem. But seriously, blasting through a ship's hull with the death laser you fire provides so much satisfaction. Or firing a whole salvo of rockets at the enemy's flagship and watching it go up in a blaze of glory? Just absolutely fantastic. Sorry for nerding out a bit, but I absolutely love this. And speaking of flagships, you have your own too. And that's whichever one you're piloting. 
you are the captain after all. Even if you have a massive capital ship supporting you, the tiny fighter you've chosen to fly because of its nimbleness will technically still be your flagship. Although, being the selfish captain you are, you can commandeer any of the ships in your fleet at any time. Now, I want to move away from this. As fun as combat is, the context for it is what gives it that tasty feeling when you bring down your enemy. And you get this from the campaign taking place, because that wasn't just any capital ship you blew up, that was the last big ship in your way of completely raising hell on the colony behind it. Now, speaking of colonies, well, what are they? Well, they are the estate of the game, the properties that factions will hold, as well as you will with the right ambitions. Colonies are where you acquire brand new ships and supplies to aid you on your journey, although you can salvage these things elsewhere through the journey. They're where you'll patch up your ship after a close call with a rocket, where you'll get new missions and accept commissions to officially be a mercenary repping a faction. Point is, they're very important. Now, if you take on the heavy task and outstanding ambition of owning your own colony, you might be more inclined to be interested in the intricacies of stock and where the imports and exports are going, how they're going to get there, and the repercussions of legal trade in your own and enemy's territories. After all, if you own a colony, you'll have to deal with all the problems that arise. But you'll also receive the bounty that comes with it. You can tax people. Whether you set up a few patrols and maybe even a military base to claim a whole section as your own, or decide to take on that role yourself, making sure your merchant convoys are able to trade uninterrupted, and your colonies aren't raided by the thousands of petty thieves scattered through the universe. Now, moving on, I want to jump to factions, because, well, we were talking about them. Factions are just simply a group you can align yourself with, or a group that you're going to just have to deal with. Agreeing to help any one of them comes with great rewards. They'll pay you well for how big you are and how many of their enemies you kill. They'll give you access to their own tech, weapons, and BIG SHIPS if they like you enough. But the downside is, like I said, they're enemies. Each faction has goals in mind, and they don't take too kindly to those opposing their goals. While joining one doesn't restrict you from everyone, some get along with each other better than others, while some need to be put in time out and by god it's now your job to put them there. Also the whole now you got a new guy pointing a gun at you just kind of causes problems. Pro tip, word of advice, don't join the raiders. While it may seem fun to join the group that takes what they want, they also live like absolute garbage. Personally, just they don't got much to offer and having everyone everywhere point a gun at you even some of the raiders, since they're, you know, savages, create some just unpleasant times. If you want to join the group that just fucks with everyone, go join a terrorist organization. At least you get something with it, too. But point is, you get to take a very personal journey and make allies and enemies along the way. You know what else you get along the way? Experience. And I mean that literally. Defeating others and doing different excursions will land you with a physical number called experience points. Enough of these and you level up and you'll select skills to boost that can turn you into a real threat on the battlefield, or a masterful commander in the campaign. But not just for you, your officers as well. Those are the people that you can hire to buff up your ships in combat, and give them some personality. And honestly, I, I think that about covers my view of the game itself, and just kind of my little run through of what it is. A lot of it is up to you to explore. But I have a few more things from outside the game that I'd like to mention. Star Sector is officially still in development like alpha early access stuff, and it has been for years, since like 2013. And that would be the biggest red flag to anyone who's played an early access game like that. However, Star Sector is truly the exception. And that's because the game doesn't feel like it's still in development at all. It feels complete. I've played hundreds of hours, and still it feels fresh. You can even look at the development history right on their website that I've linked in the description. And you can see clear and consistent progress. While it's not the quickest progress, for a small team you can tell they're dedicated. Because every few months they don't just release a hotfix, every few months they revamp a part of the game or add major content. And that's probably why they've chose not to officially release it yet. Because it's such a massive game that over time they readjust things, add parts to it, and who knows what in a couple years it'll look like. But it only seems to get better. But there's one more final thing I really want to talk about, and that's mods. Now I play games on PC because I like modding a few of them to add replayability or make it actually playable. <laughs> Skyrim. And Star Sector is one of the games blessed by an amazing community that makes outstanding mods and my favorite kind of mod, overhaul mods. 
ones that add so much content or change a drastic portion of the game, it can inspire whole new individual playthroughs and redefine the game. Now, I can't express enough, at least not right now, how much I love when small mod teams or modders share their new view of the game. It's like getting a perfect DLC, or sometimes a free sequel to a game I love. And Star Sector gets that. With many mods that add a lot of functionality to the campaign and depth to the world, and all of them love to add new balanced ships, weapons, and factions to the game, drastically altering the play experience everywhere. So if you decide to play Star Sector, which I very, 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 very strongly recommend, from the bottom of my heart, know you'll be supporting a lovely indie team who's always hard at work, and especially know that you'll have one of the best times of your life being able to freely explore the stars and create your own story. Check out Star Sector from the description below, and thanks for watching. See y'all next time.